What are some commonly disobeyed commands of Jesus by people today, Christians today, churchgoers today? Let me give you some. One, forgive the person who hurt you. Choose to give this matter to God and forgive. It doesn't mean it's not going to hurt. It doesn't mean that uh, you got to trust the person. It doesn't mean that you're going to be close buddies with them again. It means you choose to give that hurt to God. You make the decision, Lord, this is yours. I give it to you. Secondly, keep sex for marriage only. Marriage between a husband and wife. Premarital sex or any sex outside of biblical marriage is out of the question for the disciple of Jesus Christ. If you are dating someone seriously, maybe moving towards marriage, maybe engaged in marriage, and you are having sex with your fiancé or your boyfriend-girlfriend, you are not a disciple of Jesus. Don't kid yourself. A disciple of Jesus obeys the easy commands and the hard commands, no matter. This means pornography is out. This means the first 10% of your income goes to God. No questions. It means you don't divorce your spouse because, you know, you don't feel love for her anymore, feel love for him anymore. It means that unless there's a biblical reason for, a, for divorce, like adultery, something, you know, very limited, that you are married for life. It means husbands, we, we focus more on our wives than ourselves and seek to love her sacrificially. What husband here couldn't raise the bar? This one sure could. It means wives, you respect your husband. You speak in a respectful, gentle tone, not a ridiculing, condescending tone. What wife here couldn't raise the bar? It means you speak with kindness in your voice, especially in marriage. Man, that alone could revolutionize a lot of marriages. You read this Bible daily because it's the Word of God. You are devoted to prayer because it's the privilege of life. You serve Christ with your spiritual gifts and find a way to serve. You care about the poor, the needy, the orphan, the widow, the immigrant, which the Bible calls the sojourner. You gather weekly for God's people. That might be one of the more disobeyed commands today. Um, you know, a- average Bible-believing Christian, say they're Bible-believing, 1.7 times a month. I know you're going to be sick. Don't bring your germs here. But uh, don't be lazy if you're well. Get up and come here. You cannot celebrate communion with the body of Christ in your home. Obey the Lord. You gather weekly to worship the Lord. And you do all of this because you love Christ. John 14, 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. If you don't obey the commandments of Jesus then you don't really love him no matter what you say. So don't kid yourself. Now, nobody obeys completely, perfectly. I certainly don't, but I am all in. In fact, when I was 18 years old, I read the Bible because out of intellectual pride. And I almost threw the whole Bible, and on July 4th of the next year after I graduate, 1972, July 4th, at Stewart Beach in Galveston, there's a Christian rock group there. It's the Jesus Revolution days, and there, there's a guy by the name of Rusty Draper who comes to me, a stranger, and says, Do you, are you a Christian? And we begin a conversation. That day at Stewart Beach, I trust Christ as my Savior and fully give my life to Him as my Lord. Now, that's been 51 years, and of course, I've had a lot of failures and sins, but that has been the, the, the decision of my life to the present day. And I would tell you, That is the only way to live life. Because all that you are looking for is not found in the American dream, but in Jesus Christ. Would that we would know that. It is not found. If you are living for the American dream, it is not working. Don't kid yourself. It is not working. You do not have the peace, joy, love, and fulfillment that you long for inside only found in surrender to Jesus Christ. And in fact, he will unpack that more and more in the next verses. Verse 25, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. 
Now, that's a bit confusing, but we can unpack it. Whoever would save his life for himself, whoever is going to live for yourself, you're going to lose real life. But if you lose your life to me, surrender your life to me, you're going to gain the real life that you long for inside. Now, friends, believe the Lord. Believe the Bible. If you don't live this way, it's just dumb because it doesn't work. Is, is Elon Musk happy? I just read his autobiography on Audible. He's not happy. Do all the money in the world do it for you? It will not do it for you. Church, don't waste your one life. I am your pastor. And the reason I feel passionate about this is because I love you. And I don't want you to waste your life, certainly while I'm your pastor. So make the decision today if you have not. Lord, I know I I messed up in a lot of ways, but I'm all in. I'm all in. Whatever you want, I'm all in. Church, do that. Do that. It's the only way to live. C.S. Lewis put it this way, give up yourself and you will find your real self. Lose your life and you will save it. Keep back nothing. Nothing that you have not given away will ever be really yours. Nothing in you that has not died will will ever be raised from the dead. Look out for yourself and you will find in the long run, run only hatred, loneliness, despair, rage, ruin, and decay. But look for Christ and you will find him and with him everything else thrown in.